The Orca Torch D630 canister light is designed especially for technical diving and exploration, where it can continuously operate for up to 5 hours at the brightest setting. We are heading out to explore a shipwreck and the D630 is an ideal torch for this adventure. One of the notable features of the D630 is this angle adjustable cable. In my previous video, I show you how this feature lets you conveniently attach the canister at the back for side mount diving or at the side for back mount diving. Side mount refers to how scuba tanks are mounted alongside the diver as opposed to the conventional back mount. The D630 is attached to an aircraft grade aluminum Goodman handle that can be adjusted to fit your hand and leaving your fingers free. Alright already, let's talk more diving! One of the first things we notice about the D630 is how bright the light is. At 4000 lumens, it surpasses most handheld torches. The beam is a narrow 7 degrees spot with a strong throw, cutting through particles and lighting up the way. There's three modes of brightness from 460 to 1500 and lastly 4000 lumens which should last you 5 hours. But since we had the canister to supply us with ample power, we didn't power down the light. We had the D630 at full power throughout our dive. It was not surprising then that the D630 outlasted all our nitrox tanks combined. So the important question, who will find the D630 most useful? The D630 is ideal for divers who need a light that outputs a bright strong beam with a long battery life. It's for divers who need extended illumination. Divers wear the D630 on their hand and retain the use of their fingers. Underwater explorers and tech divers, this could be your go-to diving light. Video shooters, scuba shooters and scuba divers, we hope you found this video helpful. Have a safe and fun dive, gear up, go out there and shoot it great! Hi everyone! Welcome back to another live stream with Orca Torch! It's Baron here, brand ambassador for Orca Torch, and I want to welcome everyone back. We are broadcasting to you live from Malaysia and to the rest of the world. So, how is everyone out there? It's been a while since our previous live stream. So, I want to welcome all of you back. This is an international community of scuba divers, of technical divers, underwater photographers, videographers. Welcome back. And if you're already in, I know, I know, a big shout, a big shout out to Konstantin Gazi from Romania, who's been waiting so long for this live stream, you know. And uh, Konstantin, if you're here, please sign in to the comments. Let us know where you're from and let us know how are you in your place of diving. How is everything over there? You know, has your country opened up to diving already? Is it already safe to dive? Let us know. So today, I want to talk to you a little bit because our show today, right, our episode of this live stream today is about technical diving. Do you know what technical diving is all about? If you don't, no worries because we are here for you. Now, let me give you a brief rundown, a little bit of introduction to what technical diving is all about. Now, most of us, right, if you're a scuba diver, it is very likely that you are certified as an open water scuba diver, right? And that would classify you under recreational diver. So most of us, if not all of us, are recreational divers. In technical diving, however, you are going to exceed the agency specified limits for recreational diving. That means, right, as technical divers with the proper training, you are able 
to employ gear, equipment, and techniques to be able to dive deeper into the ocean and stay submerged for a longer time. That is what technical diving is about in brief. Now, tonight we have a guest of honor with us. He is a father of two. With his lovely wife Carolyn, he shares the love of diving. He is a technical diving instructor who specializes in teaching CCR, that's closed circuit rebreather. He is also a cave diving instructor with IANTD, International Association of Nitrox and Technical Divers. He loves to dive in France and in Egypt. That's where the caves are. <laughs> and get this, he is also a writer for diving magazines. He loves to dive below 100 meters. Now, check this out, right? He is serving in the Belgium mil military. So this is a soldier boy and we want to welcome Kurt Storms from Belgium. Hi Kurt, how are you? I'm very good, how are you? I'm great over here, uh, Malaysia. Uh, although we have just recovered from the lockdown, we are a little bit more open for diving, but you know what? Unfortunately, it is the monsoon season now, so very high waves. How about over there? Uh, here it's getting uh, cold. Uh, the winter is starting, so it's getting grey. Uh, so the water is getting cold out, uh, out here. But you're not afraid of that, right? Being a technical diver? <laughs> Oh no, I dive with a heating suit, so it's no problem for me. Now tell us, tell us more about what you do as a, you, you're, a, you're, you're a dive instructor. So tell us more about what goes on there. Well, um, I'm uh, specialized uh, myself in uh, technical diving, uh, especially uh, caves and rebreather diving. Um, I teach uh, till the level of uh, trimix. Uh, this in uh, open circuits or CCR. Um, the most of the parts I teach in uh, my courses here in Belgium, for the deeper dives, uh, I have to go to uh, Egypt, Italy, Austria, for, because in Belgium it's not uh, deep enough to follow that courses. Uh, and the cave courses, uh, I uh, give them in uh, France. Okay, okay. Now, for those of us out there in the audience, our viewers, our supporters of Orca Torch, now if you have any questions that you want to be asking Kurt, uh, do put them into the comments because here you have the real technical dive instructor here. He is real and he is here to help you with your questions. So it doesn't matter if you're advanced or you're just starting out. Even if you're, you, you just got your license, you're a recreational diver, Kurt is here to help all of you out. So if you've got comments, right, uh, do put them down and we'll have a look at it and Kurt will be able to answer your questions. So Kurt, if you also have, uh, if you're looking at your Facebook feed, if you've got any comments, if you see any comments that you'd like to reply to, uh, you, can, you, can, you can go ahead, we can do it together. Now, I'm okay. just going to ask you the next question. So, um, you are very experienced with CCR, that's closed circuit rebreather. Now, tell me, um, if I want to learn about this new system, what are the advantages and what do I have to look forward to? Well, uh, to understand what a rebreather is and uh, how it works, uh, it's useful uh, to understand how uh, Conventional scuba uh, works, um, scuba uh, open circuit. Um, in open circuit, you breathe a compressed gas, um, and it, with every breath you take, you only use a small fraction of the each inhaled uh, gas. You only use what your uh, metabolism is used. So the rest of the gas, especially oxygen, uh, you blow it uh, to the atmosphere. Um, so there is a tremendous uh, waste of usable oxygen uh, with uh, every breath you take. Furthermore, how deeper you go, um, 
how more oxygen uh, we lost in this uh, manner. An example for uh, open circuit types till uh, 90 meters. Um, example, uh, consumption rate uh, 20 liters a minute. The pressure on 90 meters is uh, 10 bars. So we use uh, 200 liters of gas. Um, so we blow about uh, 34 liters of oxygen in the atmosphere every breath we take. Um, now, how can we reduce that uh, consumption? Uh, just by uh, using a rebreather. Now, what's a rebreather? Um, it all starts with a loop. Uh, with a breathing loop with a mount piece, you have uh, some contour lungs, because without contour lungs we cannot breathe. Um, now, if we uh, are continue uh, breathing out of uh, that bag, uh, we produce too much CO2, and CO2 is dangerous. Uh, therefore, we need um, the loop needs to have also a CO2 absorbent uh, canister, so the CO2 uh, is taking away of uh, the breathing gas. But we are still using oxygen, so the CO2 absorbent canister alone will not permit the diver to continue breathing from the loop. Uh, so the oxygen in the breathing loop will eventually be consumed by the diver, by his uh, metabolism. Therefore, uh, the rebreather must have uh, some uh, uh, objects to allow oxygen to the breathing loop. Um, how, can you, how can we do that? Uh, by manually or electronic. But with only uh, oxygen, uh, and not able to dive deeper than six meters because we have uh, otherwise uh, uh, too high. Therefore, we need all um, in the most of the time still 40 liters of uh, air. So we uh, with that diluent gas um, we can dive deeper because uh, we um, have our PO2 under control. And this also can be injected by manually or an automatic diluent valve. So it's also going to be uh, automatic. Now, the advancement of this equipment, um, we breathe a warm gas. So we are getting uh, less cold. Um, the breathing gas is also uh, every time uh, ideal. Um, we only we uh, need only uh, the oxygen what we uh, consumed. Um, we have uh, less uh, decompression because we breathe uh, on a constant PO2. We uh, breathe also nitrox uh, when we are using uh, as dilvent. Um, and the best advantage of this is we only consume about 1 liter to 1.5 liters uh, of oxygen uh, a minute. And if you see the example of the uh, open circuit, uh, we use it more uh, oxygen. Uh, we blow 34 liters away, and now we only uh, use 1.5 liters of oxygen. So that's the most uh, advantage of a rebreather. Um, so Kurt, there is uh, some comments over here. Uh, they want to know what you think. Now, uh, we have... Uh, okay, now, I think he's from Serbia. Because I cannot... I don't know how to pronounce your name. Very sorry. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce your name. <laughs> so, he's asking, how long should we dive before going to side mount? Oh, side mount. In my meaning, you can start it immediately. If you want to, you have to do it. Uh, I know people, um, they started in side mount because they have, uh, uh, the back is not so good anymore. Um, so for me, it's no problem to start immediately with uh, side mount. Okay. And that was from, if I'm not mistaken, right, your name is Radi Voje? Yeah, Radi Voje, I think so. Sorry if I mispronounce your name. Now, Craig Armstrong is here. Craig Armstrong, shout out to Craig Armstrong, he's here with us and he's asking uh, Kurt a question here. Now Kurt, Craig is asking, which CCR machine are you trained on and which one is your favourite? And here's the thing, why? 
<laughs> well, uh, I'm trained on a couple of uh, units. Uh, I trained on uh, Revo. Uh, I'm trained on uh, AP, where, all, where I'm also an instructor. Um, I'm trained on uh, SF2 uh, side mount. I've trained on uh, the Liberty uh, side mount. You see it here in the back. Um, well, what's my favorite unit? Um, That's different, <laughs> difficult question. Uh, I use my units um, for the dives I, I do. If I'm gonna do a very deep dive, uh, I prefer my uh, AP. Um, if I'm gonna go into caves uh, with a small entrance, I use my uh, Liberty uh, uh, CCR. So it depends uh, on which type of uh, dive I, I'm doing. But uh, I also um, use my uh, Liberty uh, um, CCR as a bailout. So, yeah, I don't have one specific favorite uh, unit. Yeah, <laughs> normally when you are way up there and so senior and professional, right? Sometimes it's very hard to pick a favorite. <laughs> now, uh, cave diving. Who here likes cave diving? Anybody out there likes cave diving? Type it into the comments. Cave divers, anyone? I, I know cave diving is... Uh, some of you may like it, some of you might not because it's very... It's narrow spaces, very confined. And, you know, it's, you feel very claustrophobic. So, Kurt, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your cave diving adventures and, you know, what do you find so exciting about it? Um, cave diving is for me um, something special, um, especially the, the unknown, uh, not knowing what's uh, behind every corner. Um, also how the nature makes uh, its way uh, through uh, the bricks, uh, the erosion of the rocks. Um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful for seeing uh, the natural uh, environment. Um, and also knowing uh, that uh, caves are all over the world, um, as a diver you float uh, waiters in them, uh, in uh, such strange and mystic mystical uh, world. Um, you have to also uh, take a torch with you, um, because there is no natural light. Um, normally there is also no uh, living out there. Um, we come to places um, where nobody has uh, come before um, or it's, it's uh, already a long time ago uh, by raising the water level. Um, and no matter how many dives um, you are did in a system, every time you discover something new. Um, Often the caves are not visible from the water surface. Um, you have to descend and suddenly there's an enormous space opens up. Uh, being alone, only hearing your breath. Um, for me, it's that one hand of uh, effort. Um, but on the other hand, it's yeah, mainly a, a relaxation for me. Um, Cave diving is for us. It's my life now. Um, yeah, it's mm. it's the mystical of yeah the unknown. Yeah, so there's there's one thing Kurt said that uh, that rings that that excites me. You know, something that Kurt said to to boldly go, all right, to boldly go where no one has gone before. So this is like Star Trek, but underwater. <laughs> Okay, so um, now we're going to go to the next question, right? Uh, and Kurt, now you, you have been using Orca Torch uh, products for some time now. So can you tell us, right, uh, how has Orca Torch products helped you, especially in cave diving? Um, well, two years ago, uh, I got a question from Jimmy to enter a photo contest. Uh, because sometimes I take some pictures, uh, but I was thinking, no, I'm not good enough. So uh, 
I didn't reply uh, to uh, submit a picture of me. And that was the first time I dis discovered uh, Orca Torch. So now, uh, this year I get the same question. I tried, but it was not, uh, I was not by the, uh, the winning uh, boards. Um, and uh, Jimmy asked me uh, if I had the time to test uh, the torch, the D710. And yeah, I, I uh, received it. I took it with me to France. Um, and I was, wow. Um, I use it, uh, I still use it now as a backup light, but give me so much light and a bird time. So you can use it also as a main line. Uh, so for the beginning divers, uh, D710, it's uh, the the light uh, where you can start with it and when you go to technical diving you can still use it. Um, I did also a review and I was in a lot uh, this year. I took some pictures um, of my wife with uh, the, the torch and sent it to Jimmy and yeah Jimmy and Orca torch was uh, happy with the results so uh, I got an inv uh, invitation of uh, becoming a technical brand ambassador. Um, I simply said yes, because uh, the torch uh, had received was, yeah, it was very good. And now I'm, uh, I'm using uh, the D630, um, the, the cable light, and that's for me the best light uh, I get so for cave diving. It gives me a long burn time gives a uh, 4000 luma um, and I like uh, cable lights so yeah um, I'm thankful uh, for Orca Torch uh, to give me the products yeah so what Kurt has said just now right he one of his favorite lights uh, is the D710 and then also the D630 now the D630 is a bit unique it's not the torch, it's not the kind of torch that you see every day. So we are going to look at what makes the D630 so special and I'm going to show it to you. Right now we're going to have a close-up look at the DSEC D630 and this is a canister dive light. Let's have a look at this. So guys and girls, scuba divers out there, this is the D630 canister light. Yeah, look at that. Okay, now, I'm just going to show it to you briefly first and then I'm going to tell you about the specs here. So this uh, D630 has a maximum lumens of 4,000 lumens. That is pretty darn bright. It uses 5, yeah? 5. 5 Cree LEDs. It gives out a 7 degree super focus beam. And it's got a 90 to 180 angle adjustable cable, which I will show you real soon over here. Okay, you've got five hours of runtime at the brightest mode. So five hours, guys. Okay, now the one thing we need to look out for, right, is that it's got three brightness modes. Three brightness modes at 4,000 lumens. 1500 lumens and 400 lumens. Now let's have a wider look of at the D630. Okay, so the D630, this, okay, now this is the light and this is the canister. So this is the power pack. This guy, this monster here, <laughs> this is the power pack. This is where the juice comes from. Okay, so this is the D630. Right, and we have here a Goodman handle. So this Goodman handle lets you hold. It lets you hold. It lets you hold the D six thirty, and you can adjust if you're wearing thick gloves, for example. You can adjust, make it. You give it, give your arm more space. Or you can close it down to have a tighter grip. But very important is you get free use of your fingers. Yeah. Okay. Now, the D630 has five, uh, three, three brightness levels, right? Remember this? The D630 has three brightness modes. So you switch it on. 
by pressing once and right away you will get 4,000 lumens 4,000 lumens of brightness and this one this 4,000 lumens now this is going to last you for five hours you've also got a battery level indicator over here yeah this is a battery level indicator you can lock it so that you don't accidentally press it so that you don't accidentally press the switch or you can unlock it and three brightness modes so which means if i press it in again from 4000 it will go to 1500 and then it will drop down to 400 and finally you can switch it off yeah so right this is the battery pack this is the canister and over here you have your angle adjustable cable There you go. So I'm just going to open this up. Right? Okay. You can adjust it from 0 to 90 degrees for both back mount diving and side mount diving. So for back mount diving and then for side mount diving. Yeah, so if you if you have any uh, questions about the D630, do let us know in the comments. We're here to help you out if you need to have any questions answered with the D630. Okay, let me see if we have any comments or any questions. So Kurt, um, we are going to talk to our viewers about the next big thing that's coming up. Let me go and refresh and see if I got any comments coming in, if there's anything we need to answer. So just going to have a look. Do we have any, any comments uh, from the studio side? Anything anybody wants to ask? Okay, let's check, let's check. Um, so, we are moving on to the next item on our list and this is pretty special for all our viewers out there because, right, we are going for... It's giveaway time! Now, we are going to give away two D700s. We are giving away two D700 dive flights. Yeah? We are giving away two D700 dive torches to two lucky winners. Okay, uh, so I'm going to show you what a D700 looks like and what you can look forward to. Okay, so I'm going to go and show it to you now. We're going to go back down and have a look at, at the D700. I'm going to bring it out. This is the D700. There we go. Here we go. D700. So this is the D700, uh, let me just readjust this, right, and show it to you right now. Okay, now, this D700 has a maximum lumens of 1700 lumens. It's got 1700 lumens, it's got a 6 degree narrow focus beam. It uses a 21700 lithium ion rechargeable battery. So I'm going to show it to you as I open up the torch. You're going to see that the battery is a charger. Can you see that? And this is a 5000 milliampere battery. It's a 5000 milliampere battery and the size is 21. Oops. The size is 21700. Ah. 
So which means, right, this torch you do not need to be bringing a charger because USB. You can charge it using the USB. Okay, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to bring out the USB cable over here. And you connect the USB cable to your power bank. And then the other end, you insert it into the battery to charge it. And also, take note that this is USB-C. Uh, so it's USB-C. All right. Pretty cool. Now, this torch is a rotary torch, rotary switch torch. So you turn it. So I know some of you are doing a lot of dive with, in the caves and in the eyes. So you're wearing very thick gloves. So with your thick gloves, right, you can turn the torch on and off by just rotating the head. That's how it looks like. Okay, so two of you will be bringing back the D700 dive torch. How about that? What do you think? Two of you will be bringing back the D700 tonight. And now, here is the giveaway. And here is how you are going to be winning the dive torch. I'm going to give you uh, some guides over here, right? Now, you can only win it once. So if you, we have two giveaway sessions. We're going to have two giveaway sessions. You can only win it once. So if you won it the first time round, uh, you're not eligible to win it a second time. So we have two giveaway sessions. We're going to have one right now, and then we're going to have one just before we end the live stream. Okay? Now, keep in mind, the quickest and most accurate answer to our question will be the winner. Next, right? Now, to decide the winner, we will take a snapshot of your entry. So our snapshot will be the final decision to the winner of the D700. Yeah? So we want the quickest and most accurate answer to the question that we ask. How is that, Kurt? Am I right? Yeah, that's why. Right. Yeah? Okay, did I, I don't think I missed anything. So, the question is going to start now. Are we ready? Those of you in the audience, are you ready, viewers? Because the question is going to start now. Let's see. <laughs> there is a, a comment here, Kurt, from Joe. Joe says, I love cave diving. Kurt, teach me. I think what, she, what he means, right, is that, is this your student, Kurt? I love Keith. It was a... Yeah? yeah. Uh, I think it's uh, Yo. Uh, he is a former student of me in the, from cave diving. Ah, so is, he, is it a he or her? Or, or her? It's, a, it's a he. he. So, Yo has, Yo, Yo has said he loves cave diving. Kurt teach, taught me. Since then, I only think about caves, you know. <laughs> he only thinks about caves now. <laughs> so what a great teacher we have here in Kurt. You know, so if you have any questions, put it into the comments so that Kurt will help you to answer your question. Now, back to the giveaway. Okay, we're going to ask the question now, yeah? Are they ready? Right? Okay. Here's the question. How many brightness levels does the D630 have? How many brightness levels does the D630 have? You can put it into the comments right now and we will be taking your answers. We will be looking at the comments right now. However, Kurt, now it is our turn. So while they are busy typing in the answers and struggling uh, with each other to see who's the fastest, right? Kurt, we will be asking you questions. Okay. So Kurt, uh, what are the challenges you face when you explore caves underwater? 
when you go Star Trek in there, right? What, what are the challenges that, that you will face? Well, uh, cave diving uh, is considered as a type of technical diving. Um, you should never uh, attempt, uh, you should never be attempted to by anyone with uh, average uh, open water of uh, advanced level with initial scuba license. Um, technical diver diving uh, converts a wide range of activities um, and also requires a special training. So for the caves, you have to be uh, trained uh, good. Uh, what can happen in the cave? Well, um, we are in an overhead environment, so air supply is one of the, the challenges. Uh, we are not uh, diving setup, uh, with, but we dive with a minimum two tank setups, um, and we can separate them. Uh, so uh, a B set uh, with um, um, Cave environments, they are unique. Uh, natural light is uh, limited, so that, that's also a risk. So we use a guideline so we don't get lost. Um, you need a good uh, buoyancy control um, because a simple fall kick, uh, can, uh, kick of a fin can upwield uh, silt and sediment, um, causing visibility to drop from crystal clear to near zero in a couple of seconds. Um, psychology, um, you're in the water, uh, you can get up uh, to the surface. Sometimes you need to swim hundreds of meters uh, to get out of the water. So that's also um, a challenge. Uh, and that's the biggest challenge uh, in my eyes, it's uh, psychology. But if you train, uh, good enough and you dive a lot in, in the caves, um, you get used to it. Um, so you get your level. Uh, ah, now, uh, so I, I hope uh, you got what Craig has, uh, sorry, I hope you get what Kurt has uh, told you about the challenges like the sediments and the overhead environment. So I hope you got all that. Now, uh, from uh, one of our top fans out there, Kurt, he's, he's, been, he's been very interested in this live stream with us, right? From Romania, we have Konstantin Gazi. He's asking this question to you. What was your longest dive and where? What was your longest dive and where? Uh, it was uh, in France. Uh, it was a uh, four-hour dive uh, in uh, in Russell. It's a uh, famous cave in uh, in France. Okay. Now, uh, Kurt, another question from Constantin. What lights from Orca Torch do you use, and which is your dearest and most reliable? Which Lights from Orca Torch do you use and which is your dearest and most reliable? Well, um, I have a couple of uh, Orca Torch. Um, for diving, um, I have uh, the D710 uh, as backup, uh, uh, fitted on my helmet. Uh, then uh, for the main line uh, light, I use uh, the D630, the cable light. Then I have uh, the D530 video light and uh, the D910 uh, video light uh, when I'm taking pictures. Um, but my favorite uh, torch um, is still uh, the, T the D630, uh, the cable light. All right. Okay. Now, uh, do we already have the winner? Ah, yes. Okay. So, uh, Hopefully, uh, you have got the answer from Kurt and because we are moving on to the winner of the giveaway. So, for tonight's first giveaway, the winner is... Craig Armstrong, you are the winner of a new D700. <laughs> good job, good job, good job, Craig Armstrong. 
Okay, so he's bringing home a D700 lah. Alright. <laughs> okay. We are moving on to another question for Kurt right now. So just now we we're talking about the challenges that you face when you're exploring caves underwater. Now, your recent adventures, yeah, your recent dive at the slate mines, that was quite historical. So uh, can you tell us more about it? Well, uh, it's not only my project. Uh, we are with uh, a group of divers and also uh, random people uh, for transporting the gear. Um, we discovered uh, a couple months ago a closed slate mine in the Ardennes in Belgium. Um, it's on uh, private uh, property, so it was difficult to get in, but uh, we had the chance that the owner is a former diver and we get the permission uh, to dive as long as we will. Um, the mine was closed in uh, 1913, and from then on, nobody was ever entered the mine. The pumps were disconnected, uh, so the mine was flooded. Um, and our project is uh, to survey uh, the mine, uh, taking pictures and filling it. Um, everybody has his uh, part in the team, um, like uh, taking pictures and uh, filming it. It's a good friend of mine, uh, Vic Verlinde, who takes the, the pictures and uh, the movies. Um, we have support dives, we have uh, divers, uh, the push divers. Uh, so everybody has uh, his shop in the team. Um, we have discovered a lot of uh, galleries um, and we are still now at a depth of uh, 70 meters and we are still discovering more uh, uh, passages. Um, sometimes uh, the mine is the mine is still uh, very stable. Um, it's also very clear. Uh, the water is yeah, crystal clear. Um, now, next month we're going back. Uh, we're going to try to uh, make a connection with another other mine. Uh, in the books uh, that we are reading, uh, it's written that the two mines have a connection. So that's the next goal. Uh, for example, the connection is about uh, 300 meters uh, on a depth of 30, 35 uh, meter depth. So well, we will see if we can, can find it. Um, and the mine is only uh, accessible uh, for our team. Uh, so there are no, uh, nobody else uh, has a permission to dive in it. So it's only for us and that's, that's also unique. Um, but it's not me only. Uh, we are with uh, a couple, a couple of divers. Um, we know each other very good. Uh, and yeah. We have always fun when we going back over there. Okay, <laughs> there is a there's a question here, right? And um, uh, the question is uh, a little bit strong worded, <laughs> so uh, I'm just gonna say it out, right? Um, again, this is from from Serbia. From Serbia, and let me just let me just get his name right. Radivohe, I think, has asked you this uh, question for Kurt. Did you have an "oh shit, I'm gonna die" moment in a cave? Do you have a like "oh no, I'm gonna die"? <laughs> have you ever had that feeling before? Um, no, I never had that feeling uh, before. It always can happen but yeah you have to be uh, very strong in the head uh, to accomplish uh, that kind of dives um, so you have to be trained a lot uh, also diving a lot so it's going to be your comfort zone uh, and then yeah there's always uh, something that could happen uh, but um, if you're going to do, do that dive, you uh, you don't have to think about something like that. Kurt, um, 
Okay, I, I know you don't really have a favorite for your Orca Torch products, but I'm guessing you like the D630, right? So is it your favorite Orca Torch uh, light? And if it is, uh, let us know why. Um, yes, it's, it is. Um, uh, Orca Torch D630, it's, uh, it's, it's great for the caves. Um, you have a lot of rumor, but the most important thing for me is the burn time. You have four hour, five hours burn time. Um, it's solid. Uh, it's not too heavy. Uh, it's a cable light, and I I love to to use cable lights because uh, another light you have uh, when you are doing some stuff with your hands. You have to put your lights uh, away on the D wing. With the cable light, uh, you don't have to do that. You just put it over your, your neck, and yeah, you can do your things what you want. Um, that's why uh, I love the D630, um, especially the burn time, and also the Lama 4000 Lama. If you're going to caves with the crystal clear water, it's magnificent. Uh, your lights going so far, it's it's, it's great. Yep, yep. So um, I'd like you guys to have a look at the uh, D630 again. I'm just going to show it to you, right? Because earlier on, our we went a little bit too close. So I'd like you to have a look at the wider shot of it. And of course, uh, Kurt also some, has some really nice videos for you to see. So I'm just going to go and show you the D630 over here. Just give me a short while while I rearrange... Okay, so this is how the D630 looks like uh, uh, as we see it in a wider view. Here we go. And then, uh, following with that, um, we are... I want to talk to Kurt a little bit on, uh, on what he said about the cable. So, as you saw from the the view of the D630. Let me show that to you again. So you do notice uh, that it comes with a cable attached to the canister. Now the, the thing is, now the thing is right, uh, there are some divers who claim that the cable may get entangled and it may become a hazard but it is very refreshing to hear from Kurt saying that he actually prefers the cable because that way the light gets more secure to you. You want to comment a little bit more on that, Kurt? Yeah. Um, if you drop your light, you lose your light. And um, if you're on the bottom, it's nothing. But you have uh, a big drop off like in Egypt uh, and you will put your light away on your D-wing and you have a mistake, your light is gone. Uh, that's why uh, I only use uh, cable lights. Uh, you can drop it and you can do your thing if there's something you have to manage. Uh, and afterwards you can pick up your light like it's nothing. Um, yeah, I think for me it's, it's working the best. Um, yeah, I don't uh, need uh, any other lights uh, anymore um, because we, we're diving with uh, thick uh, gloves, with uh, dry gloves. And uh, if you have to always to put, uh, take your D-wing uh, and your bolt snap and you miss, you have a mistake, yeah, yeah, you, your light can fall down and that's not uh, possible with uh, cable light. Uh, cable light, it's one meter down and you can pick it up. Um, the, the cable by itself, it's not a big, um, uh, how do I say it? Uh, you don't have to worry about that cable light that uh, you uh, put, um, you stick something uh, behind or something. Uh, no, that's 
you are, normally the the cable is straight, so it's no problem for me. Okay, thanks for that, Kurt. Now uh, we are heading la into giveaway territory. So this is our next giveaway, and we have a D seven hundred. One more D seven hundred to give away. So this is the last giveaway for tonight for one lucky winner. So just let me explain a little bit to you. There will be a question that will be asked. Kurt will be asking this next question. Okay, now uh, Craig Armstrong cannot be winning again. <laughs> Sorry, Craig. Okay, so you can only win once. And now the quickest answer and the most accurate, so the quickest and most accurate answer that gets to us when we snapshot it, now that you will be the winner based on our snapshot. So our snapshot is considered final. Okay, so uh, now what's going to happen is Kurt will be asking the question soon. Then while we look at who is the winner, we are going to answer a question from Dan. Dan, Dan Bartlett, I think. If that's his, I, I hope I got his name right. Dan Bartlett. And uh, we're going to answer his question. So, are you ready? Kurt is going to ask the question in three. Well, I have a bunch of uh, Orca Torch lights, but I have one spe specific uh, light. What's my favorite torch of Orca Torch? Okay, now while they are busy trying to send in their answer, while they are busy trying to send in their answer, let's take a look at the question from Dan. Okay, so we have a question from Dan, right? Uh, let, me, let me just double check his question. Dan Bartlett. Okay, let's see his question. What was your preference on torch switches and why? What is your preference on torch switches and why? So I'm guessing he's asking about the rotary ones, the one that you turn and the one where you push to switch on. What do you think, Kurt? Well, um, I am only use uh, push buttons uh, because uh, when you have to turn on the head, for, uh, turn on the light, it's not working uh, very well when uh, you use it uh, on uh, your helmet. Um, so I only want to use um, lights with a push button. Mm, okay. Okay, so, uh, well, Kurt, coming from technical diving, he prefers push button. Uh, me, coming from recreational, uh, I also like push button torches. But, of course, we have divers out there who are wearing, wearing thick gloves and they feel it's a little bit hard to feel the button so you know different divers they have different preferences so you, at least now you know from two different worlds uh, what are the torches that we, uh, what kind of buttons on our torches that we like uh, next right we are going to while the winner is being uh, being tabulated while we look at who the winner is it's not out yet, so we're going to ask Kurt uh, one, one, one of the last questions for tonight. We're going to ask Kurt. So, Kurt, for divers who are thinking of going into exploring Star Trek underwater, those who want to get to know more about technical diving, who want to experience technical diving, right, Kurt? Uh, what is your advice to them? Well, um, my advice is take a good, good um, but take also time uh, to learn. Uh, especially in technical diving, is buoyancy very important. Um, and if you pass your course, um, don't think, wow, now we can do it and I will go meters of uh, four in the caves or, or the depth. No, uh, take it step by step. Um, but the most important thing is to keep enjoying what you are doing and don't push yourself over your limits. 
just enjoy every dive you do and take your time to practice the skills that's uh, necessary for technical diving. Yeah, so keep in mind, technical diving, it is not a competition. It is to take your time to perfect your skills so that you can overcome more challenges, greater challenges underwater. Now, do we have the winner? Okay, before we go for the winner, right? Uh, I think, right, we have... Uh, let me see. Let me check if there is any questions. So if you have questions, uh, you can put them down so that Kurt can answer. Let's see. Uh, uh, okay, I don't think there's any more comments yet. So we're going to go straight ahead to announce the winner. And the winner, the final winner for tonight, for the final, the last D700 Dive Torch, goes to Nasty Fernandez. Congratulations, Nasty Fernandez. You win a D700 Dive Torch. Yay! Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, so we have two D700s going to two lucky winners already. Um, so, we are going to be ending our Facebook Live with Orca Torch. Now, I'm going to show you Kurt Storm's uh, Instagram so that if you want to follow Kurt Storm's, you can check him out. If you can't see it clearly, it's Kurt9900024. It's Kurt9900024. Okay, uh, Kurt, do you have anything to say to the viewers before we finish our live stream here? Um, thank you for viewing uh, uh, this live. Uh, and if you're planning to dive, just keep uh, practicing and keep enjoying every dive you do. All right, all right. So we are nearing the end of our live stream already. And uh, let me just go through the comments one more time to see if we have anything left. Anybody? Okay, last, last chance for you to ask technical diving instructor Kurt Storms your questions. Uh, Kurt Storms is from Belgium, but he dives all over the world, especially in France and in Egypt and even in Italy. Uh, let me see. I've got some messages coming in. Uh, anything? Nothing, right? Okay, okay, okay. So, here we go. So, Kurt, uh, we want to thank you for joining us. Uh, what time is it in, in Brussels, Belgium right now, Kurt? Uh, it's uh, 10 past 2 in the afternoon. Ah, so it's in the afternoon and we over yeah. here are at night and the weekend is coming up. Tomorrow is Friday. <laughs> Where are you off to next, Kurt? Um, Sunday, I'm uh, leaving back to uh, France for a cave course. Wow, another cave course in France. Living the life, Kurt. Yes. <laughs> so, with that being said, um, I'm Baron here with Kurt Storms, diving technical diving instructor. And on behalf of Alter Torch, we want to thank you all for joining us in this live stream. And we want to wish you to dive safe and have great dives. And we're signing out. Bye everyone. <laughs>